learn from it. Thank you. Here and here, they will have something. They will say you are, you are not well. Because they study for six years, they must say something. When you find a situation that is transgenerational, it is suggestive of the fact that there is a transaction that was made with a certain spirit and the spirit is applying the impact of the agreement across the lines of generations. When you find a situation that is cyclical, cyclical, are you there? Because I've met people before that a strange type of affliction comes upon them when it is full moon. And in the study of medicine, there is no compatibility between the rise of the moon and afflictions. But it will interest you to know that the word lunatic means smitten by the moon. Are you there? Or somebody might say, oh, this Nigerian preacher just came to talk about Satan. It is because of your ignorance of how the spirit realm functions that you have been held captive for many years. The voice of deliverance comes to shed light. The Bible says light is that which makes manifest. Some of you don't even know you are bound. Light needs to come into your corridor to unveil the fact that you have been laboring under fetters, chains, stocks, and bounds. As long as we do not appreciate the legal undertone behind captivity, you will keep doing your faith confessions and your faith confessions will not produce any result because the matter is trapped in a legality. And only a legal procedure can undo its import. Are you still with me? I mentioned three symptoms that are suggestive of the fact that there's a legal, legal premise. Number one is what? Number two is what? Number three is what? Number four. If the symptoms of the affliction are unnatural, you know, you take it to the doctor and the doctor runs his tests, writes runs his examination, writes a few tests, say, go do this test, do an MIR, do a CT scan, do this scan, do that scan, and you finish all the scans. The scans that are supposed to give an insight into the health condition of the individual, and when all the scans come back, everything is okay. The blood pressure is okay. The sugar level is okay. All the indices and indexes have a wonderful value within the range of normalcy, but yet there is an affliction that is tangible, is palpable, and is visible. Manifestations that transcend logic are suggestive of the fact that there is a legal premise associated with the bondage. You will soon see how Joshua's situation was solved it was not solved by tongues. As you are now with me. Tongues are very powerful. In fact, they are one of the most potent weapons on the war field. You see, Battles in the war front are different from battles in the court. You know the type of, you know how to fight on the war front. Those your ballistic tongues always come to your rescue if the battle is on the war front. But I'm talking about a different kind of battle. This contention has a legal premise attached to it. Your kaka 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 will not produce any results. What you will need is to conduct a prayer of inquiry so that God will show you the premise upon which the legality is established. In the case of Joshua, it was filthy garments. 
as, as simple as you are seeing this presentation, it will take you time to know the source. And if you lack the ability or persistence in the place of prayer, you are going to be a perpetual victim. You know, in the body of Christ, especially among us Pentecostals, we were not, we were not taught devotion. We were not taught prayer. There was no regiment that was set up to ensure that you cannot escape prayer. You must be afflicted with enough prayer until you accept to be a prayer machine. There is no system like that. Our model of church these days is a place of, of um, a corporate setting where everybody has his suit on and his tie is knotted according to the American opinion. There is no power in that level of packaging. When you check, oh my, if you check the book of Acts of the Apostles, you will not find any occasion where dress code was mentioned. As much as it is wonderful for you to dress well as a pastor, dressing well is not part of your ministry because John the Baptist had a ghetto, a, a, a leather ghetto, and he still prophesied, thus say the Lord. I think we have forgotten the essence of our calling. And many people are trying to, you know, they think that an excellent spirit is their ability to blend colors. So when you come, there's this purple cotton here. There's this yellow cotton there. There is a green cotton there. And everything is just properly blended. I need to tell you, just in case you are not aware, the blessed, best blender of colors in the world are gay. So when you go study your Bible, find out what the Bible means when it said Daniel had the spirit of excellence at work on his life. The excellent spirit that was at work on the life of Daniel was what was responsible for him to decipher parables. If you bring a parable concocted in ancient Swahili language. Hey, I learned of one language. Luganda. Luganda. Mahai koko miseke. Luganda language. Ancient Luganda parables. If you bring it to Daniel, because of the excellent spirit he carried, he would decipher it. If you bring to Daniel an echolac box with the combination lock intact, when Daniel looks upon it, he will tell you the combination lock because the Bible revealed that upon him light, light and understanding, such light that was found among the deities of the forest, that kind of light was on Daniel. The, 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 oh my God, the description of Daniel in the Bible, there was no one else in the Old Testament that had that status. He was not just a prophet, he was a prophet that was matured in his prophetic ministry. Even when angels came and wrote on the wall, many, many take care of a sin. It was a language that was not spoken among men. It, that language was written in the runes of cherubims. Daniel came there and it, because light and understanding was upon his life. If you are going to navigate in the legal estate of the spirit, there is something you cannot do without. It is called light. God will need to shed light on the premise that empowers darkness. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Now, back to our scripture. We are still in Zechariah chapter 3. Before this, the introductory scripture for the evening. It is designed to bring you back from where you went. Because most of you are not, you are here in body. But in spirit, you are in Entebbe. You are... So this scripture is the vehicle to convey you back, spirit, soul, and body, so that we can be together. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's go to verse 4. 
And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. I will show you why this scripture is very important. Because one of the protocols of undoing bondages that have legal foundations is that we take away the premise, are you there, that empowers the devil. The first recommendation for Zechariah was take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he